50 said, now I'm sure Puffy didn't do it. He is innocent. This proves nothing. This is what his lawyers are going to say. God help us all. And he put the prayer hand emojis. Now, 50 is being sarcastic right here. He's pretty much saying, you know, I've been telling you guys Puffy is guilty, that there's some truth to it and where there's smoke, there's fire. And, you know, for the people that say, you know, 50 is just hating on Diddy and, you know, you just always have something negative to say about it. People behind the scenes know these type of things about Diddy and they've been knowing about him all along. The fact that this footage is from 10 years ago and nobody has come forward and put this footage out. Somebody has literally held on to this for the last 10 years and had no issue, um, you know, with with not exposing that this exists. It's crazy. So behind the scenes, a lot of people already know that this has been going on, know that this has been happening. We saw the video uh, 50 posted earlier this year where it was Cassie balled up under a blanket on the floor. Um, and Diddy was standing over, you know, and it seems like this is a similar incident, if it's not the same incident, um, you know, where Cassie was scared for her life. What you want? What? What you got to say now? What you got to say now? You ain't got shit to say when you put your girl on the snap. Baby. Hey, babe. I mean, shit getting weird. Come on, baby. It's hot outside. You fucking wrapped up in that blanket. Let's go jog on the beach. And, you know, uh, clearly, clearly being abused, man. So that's what 50 had to say about For as long as anyone can remember, 50 Cent has been telling the world the truth about Sean P. Diddy Combs. However, have people been listening to the man up until now? No, not recently, man. Not with all the accusations against Diddy surfaced. Although everyone is finally ready to hear what the rapper had to say about being abused, it's all very graphic right now. To put it simply, Did is a really nasty guy. I mean, allegedly, of course. Tell me about your birthday party. Am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. When I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen the show up. To no, well, there. <laughs> is it on the East Coast? Yes. Well, that's why. Why don't yeah. you have one here on the West Coast? Because I work all the time. Okay, well, may maybe I have one at your house. Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> now, what time would your party start, let's say? Like 9.30. Really? That early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at, like, midnight. Like, what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party, though. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, it, no, it, it'll go from, like, 9.30 to, like, maybe 3 o'clock, 2, 3 o'clock. And then, you know, we have the top two floors of the hotel. Mm -hmm. and, we'll... and then it will carry on there? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. then it... mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I mean, um, the, the after party. Mm -hmm. No, I know about them. Um, <laughs> I'll listen to the music. Um, <laughs> I've heard that song, After Party. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that was at the Holiday Inn, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so... Here's the issue, according to 50. He leverages his reputation and notoriety in the music business to entice young artists to visit his house and party as the parties stop at midnight. This is what happens at the after party. The freak off session where they used to do in the studio and all of that over different entertainers' houses and stuff, where they'd be having them parties where they won't invite you to. And they'd be like, we having a party tonight, but this ain't your kind of party. You'd be like, yeah, I ain't going. I don't want to go. Freak off parties? When you go in there, they'd be like, yo, let me tell you something. We used to go in the club. we go into the nightclub, right? And we go and get to the VIP. All of these girls come around the VIP, and they just be standing there. and Like, let me tell you something, man. I'm going to get back with you. We got to rewind this back. We used to go to the, when we go to the club, we used to have these bottles, right? And on this bottle, they'd be, they'd be regular Moet bottles. On them bottles right there, they'd be to have something to make the girls be real, real slippery and all of this kind of stuff. So when you get up, they'd be like, don't touch them bottles right there and only drink them bottles right there. So we already knew what the drill was. You just don't mess with them bottles, right? Then all of the girls is in the club after a while. They all running, look, opening up their mouth like little birds. He was running around just popping pills in their mouth. Pop, pill, 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 pill. And then that was the party. But all of the females that was in it, that's what they wanted. That was what party. It was part of the hip-hop culture. We ain't seen nothing wrong with it until Bill Cosby got in trouble. So according to 50, Diddy fills empty cups whenever he sees them. And his parties are frequented by young people who are given narcotics and strong alcohol throughout the night. <laughs> Welcome to the family, John. 
Since Diddy is now recording everything and using it to blackmail people, the objective is to ensure that everyone has left before they can even testify later. No, I'm definitely making it. I'm, I'm making it for everybody, and I think it, it's going to really open and broaden everybody's horizons. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was, I was looking. I was looking for you. I tell you, get your hand out my pocket, man. Get, get your hand out my pocket. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing on the channel. Get your hand out my pocket, man. Look at me when I'm talking to you. I see yo, yo. I see what you're doing. I see, I see what you're doing, man. I see what you're doing. Nah, nah, look at me, man. I see what you're doing, man. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to make me. Okay, I'm telling you all right now. On I Want to Work With Diddy, I'm going to physically put my hands on somebody for the ratings. <laughs> because he's not going to outdo me. I'm going to physically, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go to Central, right Central Book. Yeah, 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 I'm used to it. I know what it is. But you get your hand on my pocket. Get off my channel, boy. <laughs> yeah, I, love, I love this show, though. You got the brand new show. Have you say, seen I it? it? Yeah, I love this show. Uh, Donald Trump seen it as well. Yeah, yeah. Donald Trump saying my my show's a knockoff of The Apprentice. I said, "What's the matter with Donald?" <laughs> hey, yo, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, he got a little age on him. You can I see mean, to me, be honest, it felt it felt a little. I want to work for Diddy inspired to me though. Yeah, but you know what? You know this. This is what I got to do it right. And these are my friends. What the guys? Are... The rapper has been telling people this for a very long time. The true question is though, why do people still listen to him before? Rapper 50 Cent arrived at the courthouse with an entourage and walked past cheering fans. But once inside the courtroom, he became Curtis Jackson, a 29-year-old who admitted to trampling and beating three women at a concert. He attacked women. Women. We were just there to see a concert. We were not there to get beat up. We were not there to get hit. The rapper with the gangster attitude stepped on two of the women and punched the third in the face after jumping into the crowd in search of someone who threw a water bottle at him during a surprise concert at this club in May of 2004. They did nothing to justify or excuse the defendant's actions. Curtis Jackson already has a criminal record from 10 years ago. He was a drug dealer and a gang member. He was convicted of a felony. He has demonstrated since his earlier run-in with the law as a young man, that he is a law-abiding citizen. That is not the image 50 Cent uses to sell his music, but it will have to be. Judge Robert Coomer accepted Jackson's admission of the facts, gave him a lecture on how this incident would reflect on the rapper's nine-year-old son, and then continued the case for two years without a finding. In the meantime, the rapper will have to submit to random drug tests, pay the medical expenses of his victims, pay court costs, undergo anger management treatment, and produce an anti-gun violence public service announcement. Jackson signed off on the deal. Oh my God! And then snuck out of the courthouse through a back door without signing any autograph. While he and Diddy were buddies, Daddy never truly signed him to Bad Boy. So when a rapper was starting out in the music business, he had a hard time breaking through. Now that's relatively easy for everyone. 50 had an ulterior goal and you know he'd be jealous. Stories about you literally just like all of a sudden getting a plane, jumping on a plane, and flying to some other country. Have you done that? Have you just like literally like decided within an hour and then everyone gets on a plane? Yeah, we used to do that frequently. That gets expensive too. Yeah. That's so, crazy. I mean, Entourage is, was basically his life, and I say was in past tense because you got to see so his entourage compared changed. to my entourage. What is your entourage? Well, now? mine is very scaled back now. If I'm with my family, it's my wife and the kids, and maybe we'll have a nanny. And maybe I'll have one of my assistants. Like the other day, we, yesterday we did something. He had 40 people with him. He had people that were like over in the corner working on computers. I'm like, well, they can't be with him. All of a sudden, he's like, you send that Instagram. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and I'm like, I got. Tell me about that new album. Uh, how does it differ from your previous work in terms of sound and energy? Or well, is I, it kind of more of the same? I started with concept, so I know I wouldn't make something that felt like things I met in the past. And the concept was prosperity. Because I tried to find, like, the outlines to a lot of my other projects was life and death. Like Ready to Die, like um, Life After Death, like the Machiavelli album. It all had those, those do or die tones to it. And this project, it, it's about prosperity. So it's a warped perspective to see it from, from some points because it offers the positives and negatives. You know, it, it gives you that, the person that has that sense of entitlement towards you to not being vocal at that point, but around you thinking these things and feeling these feelings when they see you continue in progress. 
And you thinking that they're just a good friend and they're always gonna be there. You know, um, I wrote about uh, jealousy and envy and the environment that I grew up in, it, it may not actually be positive for you to do good in front of someone when the price of life is cheap. You know, they'll take your life because they see you progress and they develop something that's it's, it's evil. It's that, that when they say that money is the root of all evil, it may bring evil out of people in different ways. Jealousy or envy, or seeing you have things that they wish they had. You know, at point. So I was able to capture that, and it's interesting because the tones within our culture have been: if, if it's not about money, it doesn't. It ain't about shit. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's a new way to offer. Uh, a wider, broader perspective of that concept. It's more, um, right, it, ca it caters to the, the person that aspires to live the highest level of life. You know, it's to halut living. But it, it's more of a, uh, I don't not make note of the person that is there with a sign just begging for something. You know, it doesn't actually want to do anything to move forward, but it's just there. They exist, so I put it there, you know. 50 was jealous of Diddy's initial lack of loyalty because he had too many police records against him, and Diddy didn't want any hassle, even though Diddy now claims it was logistics. Man, look. <laughs> I used to, let me tell you, so I don't mean to cut you, this funny. I used to, I used to, you know, we used to be on the road, you know, you'd be like, yo, let me go over to my puff room, see what they doing. And you knock on puff door, he'd be sitting there damn near butt naked. You ever just had a grown ass man answer his hotel door butt naked and they'd be like, come on in. You'd be like, mm, I'll come back. You, you ever close your eyes, you'd be like, I guess you're not presentable. And then walk away because see what happens is if they be like, come on in, and then you come on in, they be like, this man just came into my room. I'm sitting there butt ass naked. I told him to come on in and he came on in. You be like, so what's going on for the day? Acting like you don't notice he there naked. You be like, bro, put some clothes on. What are you doing? Walk I don't want to see you naked. Grown man stuff. Yo, that's kind of disrespectful. So when you get, that's that's called the test off. How you make sure you breaking in. Little call, call the artist up here to the room, tell him I'm gonna have a meeting by my tub. He be in there by the tub and stuff, soaking and stuff. But at naked, you be like, how the hell am I supposed to have a meeting with a nigga butt naked in the tub? 50 assertions. There were no bitter feelings because he never asked to be signed as a bad boy because his style was distinct and more in line with other record labels. However, things took an odd turn when Didi began to approach him. Flattering close-up photo of the Rock Nation mogul, 50 wrote, Jay in hibernation, he ain't coming outside, so this ish with Puff blow over. No brunch, no lunch, no dinner. LOL, I'm all you got, I'm outside. 50 was referencing Jay-Z canceling this year's Rock Nation brunch, which is held annually before the Grammy Awards and is typically attended by Diddy, among other A-list celebrities. This is not the first time that 50 Cent has taken aim at Jay-Z over Diddy's sexual assault allegations, all of which the Bad Boy Records founder denies. Back in March, the G-Unit boss shared an image of a milk carton with Jay-Z's face edited onto its missing children's ad slot. Anybody seen Jay? LOL. Puff said the ain't answering his phone, LOL. He captioned the post, jokingly suggesting Jigga had gone ghost on his longtime friend in his time of need. 50 later uploaded a deep fake video from the film New Jack City with the faces of actors Wesley Snipes and Ice-T altered slightly to represent Puffy and Hove respectfully. I should have killed you myself, bitch. <laughs> See, that's the difference between you and me. <laughs> yeah, well, this is over with. Come work for me. He wrote underneath the clip, this thing is bigger than Nino Brown, LOL, New Jack Diddy. With his caption, 50 appeared to be implying that Jay-Z has some knowledge of Diddy's alleged crimes of sexual assault and sex trafficking. Jay has yet to comment on the allegations made against Diddy by various parties, including his ex-girlfriend Cassie and the Love Album producer Lil Rod. 50 Cent has also used deep fakes to mock Diddy since the first lawsuit was filed against him in November, including one that involved Donald Trump. In March, he shared a doctor video which showed former President Trump saying, Puffy, 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 you stupid ass nigga. I told you, stop fucking with R. Kelly. I said, grab them in the pussy. Don't kidnap the pussy. They raided your shit, I see. I got a courtesy call when they raided my house. You really fucked up, up my nigga. The deep fake also referenced rumors of a gay affair between Diddy and Meek Mill, which the Dreams and Nightmares rapper... Oh, Fifth Amendment right? 
you have to, the judge can hold you in contempt and keep you in jail for the life of the crime. I mean, for the life of the, uh, yeah, the life of the, uh, the, uh, the court proceedings. So why would she go through that stuff? She go in there and answer the questions they ask her. Now, do you think now that that's kind of tricky though, don't you think? Because she was with Diddy for like 10 years. You don't think she was part of any of these crimes or anything? Bro, this is not tricky because when she come in and they testify uh, for them, they're going to give her immunity over anything that happened. Cause you got to realize they don't want her. They want him. Mm. So the, the DA going to say, yo, listen to me, anything that you tell us, you know, even though it's a criminal act that you were doing and stuff like that, we're going to give you immunity. You're going to be one of our witness. You, she's she's going to be witness for the prosecution. Okay. You're on Instagram of King performing with his father on stage. 50 then sarcastically commented, I feel so threatened by the things Christian is saying on his record. I'm afraid for my life. Please don't hurt me, guys. I never mentioned or posted anything about Puffy's kids because Keefe D said he killed Tupac. LOL. 50 then went on to rehash the sexual assault allegations against King Combs, and he posted pictures of the alleged victim's injuries. On that post, 50 wrote, At King Combs, that what you told Grace Omarque on that boat, huh? Gave her the puffy juice with the special sauce in it. LOL, boy oh boy, bad boy for life. And it looks like 50 also wasn't done there because he later went on to highlight some lyrics from Pick Aside where King Combs rapped. Knock them walls down like when them Fetty boys ran them both our cribs. Too bad they ain't know we bought the one next door because that's the one they miss. In his caption for that, 50 wrote, Now why would you say some like this when you know the feds are investigating? Is you stupid or is you dumb? LOL. King Combs was accused of sexual assault by... Now that he's been attempting to convince everyone that Diddy is involved to Hughes crimes once more, 50 would undoubtedly be first in line if the feds requested leads and evidence. I heard you're scared of clowns. No. I heard that. Impossible. Why is it impossible? Because I'm a black man. <laughs> you can be scared. I have so many other things to be fearful of. A clown uh, is not going to scare me. Really? Yes. I'm not afraid of clowns. I, but I heard that you were. <laughs> what do you think Diddy will do next?